Okay, so uh, hello everyone again. And uh, we'll start with uh, this problem that one of your friends had sent me. <clears throat> so it's a, uh, a work energy problem on an inclined table that you have a box, okay, or crate, crate or box. Uh, it is pushed by this force P which is uh, horizontal to the right. And the inclination angle is 30 degrees that the, uh, uh, this box is moving on the incline in the upward direction. So in its initial velocity uh, at the time that this force P is uh, started to apply it, V1 is given as 0 0.5 meter per second. And after the application of uh, this P force, uh, the box is, uh, changing its uh, velocity after three meters to 2.4 meter per second by increasing its uh, velocity uh, in compared to V1. Uh, the time interval is also given. Uh, this three meters is taken by this box in 2.9 seconds, okay? And the P force is 5,600 Newtons. Okay, it's also given the magnitude of the P force, which is applied horizontally to the box. Okay. And the work done by the normal force. The question is asking the work done by the normal force. Okay. And uh, it says it's a rough surface, I think. Yeah, it's a rough surface. I mean, that means there is a friction. Uh, whenever you see this rough surface, this means that you have uh, friction. Okay. So let me draw here the free body diagram for the box that it has the speed force. It has this mg, which is downward. Since it's moving, uh, this is the inclination angle, inclination of the surface. Since the box is moving in the upward direction, there is going to be a frictional force, which is uh, parallel to the inclined surface. But of course, it's not the horizontal in the horizontal direction. It's parallel to the inclined surface. This is going to be a frictional force. OK. And what other forces are we having? So it's, of course, it's going to be having the normal force, which is normal to the inclined surface, okay? 90 degrees to the inclined surface. So I hope, I think you, these are all forces, not, nothing else. I mean, one, two, three, four, there are acting four forces on, on, on the box uh, moving from, from this point up in the inclined table. So the question is asking, okay, this box is moving in this direction, three meters. During this displacement, what is the work done by the normal force? Okay, it is just zero, right? Work done by normal force is the normal force dot product with delta x. And since the box is moving in this direction. Delta X is just parallel, a vector parallel to the inclination surface. And the magnitude is going to be three meters for this delta X vector because it's a displacement vector. What you do to find the work is multiply the uh, vector, force vector by the displacement vector. But the thing is, nor, uh, the uh, normal vector and the displacement vector are perpendicular to each other, right? And the dot product of between any two vectors, if these vectors are perpendicular to each other, is always zero. Normal force can never do work. Okay. So normal force never can do any work on any object. It's not particular to this problem. Uh, 
whatever you know the problem you may have any uh, solid object which is moving in any direction the normal force on on that object can never do a work it's always zero this is not particular to this situation but of course you know uh, this is uh, you know in that in that sense this is a very uh, easy question but i will work on this question more i will ask you more uh, questions on regarding this problem okay so my question regarding this problem is check the work kinetic energy theorem okay check the work kinetic energy theorem what was the work kinetic energy theorem the work done by all forces on the displacement of this object the crate the box a three meter displacement work done by all forces is going to be equal to according to our kinetic energy theorem work kinetic energy theorem it's going to be equal to change in its kinetic energy right so what is the change in the kinetic energy well since we know uh, before and after uh, this displacement before the displacement the, uh, the uh, velocity is v1 and after this displacement the velocity is v2 we can just calculate the change in the kinetic energy right because it is nothing but one half m v2 squared minus one half m v1 squared and since the problem gives what the v1 and what the v2 v2s are so we can calculate this change let's first first calculate the left and right hand side of this equation the change in the kinetic energy then we will calculate also uh, the left hand side the the work done by all these forces during this displacement so this one uh, what is the uh, mass of the crate it is 700 so one half multiplied by 700 uh, v2 square which is uh, 2.4 square minus v1 square is just 0 0.5 square okay so if i calculate this let me calculate this in my calculator uh, 2.4 uh, squared minus 0 0.5 squared okay is equal to 5.51 and multiply this by 2 350 is equal to so this is uh, like uh, 1928.5 joules okay uh, 1000 or let's say 1.9 two eight five kilojoules okay so that's it i mean this is the uh, uh, amount of energy uh, difference between the uh, final and in initial kinetic energy so what about the left hand side okay left hand side we have to find the work done by all these forces we have just found that normal force does not do any work right and we can calculate the work done by p mg and force of friction well we can calculate mg the amount of work done by mg and p but we cannot calculate the amount of work done by frictional force because we don't know what the coefficient of kinetic friction okay so the left hand side cannot be calculated but at least we can do this we can find what is the work done by sorry what is the work done by let me write it over here what is the work done by force of friction in this problem this is the question so the left hand side over here is that work done by friction plus because this is the total work done by all forces 
work done by gravity, mg, plus work done by normal force, plus work done by this external force, p. Okay? The left-hand side has all these four different types of works done by different uh, four types of forces. But this is zero because we already found that normal force can do cannot do any work. And what about the work done by friction? That this is the question that we have we should find. We don't know. What about the work done by gravity? Gravity is downward, but the box is moving in this direction, delta x. Well, what you should do is you should uh, multiply this mg vector by delta x. This is a vector mg, the weight, and by delta x. Well, mg has this component mg, right? Cosine, sorry, sine 30 degrees, which is parallel to the inclined surface, but it's going to be in this direction. Uh, let me show only uh, the components of mg in this picture. The components of mg in this picture is that horizontally it is downward parallel to the force of friction, which is mg times cosine, sorry, sine 30. And the other component is mg, uh, which is normal, mg times cosine 30, right? So I just decomposed the mg vector into uh, a component which is perpendicular to the surface of the inclination and a component which is parallel to the surface of inclination. So I just got rid of mg, but I put these two components over here. So which one will do work? Well, obviously mg cosine theta will not do a work because it is normal. It is perpendicular to the direction of motion. So don't worry about mg cosine theta. But mg sine theta, which is in a direction opposite to the direction of motion, it will do a negative work, right? So this is going to be minus mg sine 30 degrees multiplied by delta x is three meters. Well, let's put delta x over here. Okay. Next, I have just found the component of gravity that does a negative work. And this is what we try to find, the uh, work done by frictional force. And this is zero. And what about the VP, WP, sorry. The work done by P force, which is the P force is 5,600 Newtons. But the thing is, again, uh, work, this P force has its components parallel to the direction of motion, which is in the direction of motion. So it will do a positive work. Uh, but the component is going to be uh, P times cosine theta. So it is going to be P times cosine 30 degrees multiplied by delta X. And it's going to be positive because this component obviously has its uh, direction, which is in the direction of the motion of the object. So the left hand side is this, okay? The right hand side is just we have found. And on the left hand side, only unknown is the work done by force of friction. So if we calculate all these, we can find the work done by force of friction to be one point, so one one thousand nine hundred twenty eight point five joules plus. If minus mg can be shifted on the right hand side, it's going to be plus mg. M is seven hundred kilograms. Seven hundred multiplied by g is nine point eighty one. Sine thirty degrees multiplied by delta x is three meters. Uh, right. And minus this term is going to be uh, transferred to the other side as minus. Minus P is 5,600 cosine 30 degrees multiplied by delta X, which is three. So this is going to be the work done by the frictional force on this problem, okay? Um, all right, the work done by 
there is this shining and I'm trying to just pull up the light. Okay, so obviously, I mean, uh, just check this. You should find a negative value because the work done by friction always is negative. You have frictional force is always in the direction which is opposite uh, to the direction of motion. Okay. Just check this. Uh, this quantity should be negative. Okay. If it's not negative, we are doing something wrong. All right. Okay. Any questions on this problem solution? So if you have uh, no any question on this solution, uh, let's move on with another problem that your friend is also asked for today's recitation. Okay, this is the other problem that your friend is just asked uh, on the discussion board. So you have uh, this vertical shaft which can rotate around this axis and the vertical axis. And the vertical shaft has also this horizontal arm. And on this horizontal arm, at uh, this end, uh, a mass, a ball, okay, a solid ball, is hanged down by this string, okay? And also there is another uh, string that attaches to the uh, ball in this direction to the point that the arm connects to the shaft, okay, in this direction. Both uh, these distances from, from this vertical axis to the point that the vertical string is, you know, attached to the string is 0 0.8 meters. And this is one meter. And this uh, string is just as a length of 0 0.6 meters. And this ball has a mass of five kilograms that the problem gives you. And the ball has this circumference, since the shaft is rotating in around this axis, the vertical axis, it has this circumferential speed, which is given in the problem to be 2.8 meter per second. If you see this motion of the ball, that you know this shaft is rotating around this vertical axis, if you just look at from top, you are what you are going to see is a circular motion, right? The ball is in a circular motion with the circumferential speed of 2.8 meter per second. And the radius of this circular motion is going to be just the length of this arm, which is 0 0.8 meters, right? Uh, this is how you visualize the problem. Uh, you know, the problem is all about the motion, the circular motion of a ball when you look at from top view, okay? And these are the given problems, okay? And the problem tells you that this, this, this rope is just a vertical and this rope is uh, making some angle uh, with the horizontal and the vertical direction, of course. But obviously this, this triangle is a right triangle, right? And 0 0.8 meters this side the right, uh, the perpendicular sides are 0 0.8 and 0 0.6. The hypotenuse is one meter, right? Okay. So the problem is ask, asking to you that what is the radial acceleration of this ball? And the radial acceleration AR, the magnitude of the radial acceleration. Okay. You know this, I mean, uh, I, you know, if you just look at the lectures or lecture notes or videos, etc., whatever it is, on the resources, uh, you know much about uh, the uh, circular motion. And if we have 
an object which is in circular motion, uniform circular motion. This is a uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion is that the object is always rotating around a fixed axis, fixed point or fixed axis around just a circle having a certain radius. The radius is in this problem is 0 0.8 meters uh, with a constant circumferential speed. And this is a uniform circular motion. So in a uniform circular motion, the radial acceleration is just equal to the, the circumferential speed squared divided by the radius. And the radius is just 0 0.8 meters. So it's a very simple problem. Okay. E, hocam bu şekilde yaptım da sonucu yanlış söyledi de o yüzden sormuştum. E, Buradan buldum sonucu yanlış dedi. Bazı bazı şeyler soruların cevapları yanlış şeydi. E, kanvas koyu üzerinde e, bazı yanıtlar yanlış şimdi. Tamamdır hocam. Yanlış vermiş. So the the result is going to be 2.8 uh, squared divided by 0.8 whatever it is. You know. Uh, the result of this calculation is going to be zero. Okay. But the thing is about this problem, I can ask additional questions. Okay, I will do it. The problem says that, uh, right, uh, the problem says that the tension in the two wires and these two ropes, this rope and this rope, okay, or string, I said string, string, rope or wire are all just the same. The tension on these wires or the strings, the problem says that it's equal to each other. They have the same stiffness, okay? Yani buradaki e, kablolarda, o ipte topu tutan iki ip var görüyorsunuz. Bu iki ipteki gerilme kuvvetleri diyor problemde birbirine eşit. Let's call these tensions as a T, right? Because this is what we usually do. This T and the tension on the vertical rope is also T. Let me write over here. Okay. Can you find this tension as, you know, Newton's, as a magnitude? What is T? That's my question. And you can perfectly do this by the given values in the problem. You can easily do this. What is tension? Well, of course, uh, if you have a circular motion like this, all right, this circular motion can be provided by a circular radial force, which is going to be radially toward the center at every point on during the motion. And what is this radial force in our picture in terms of tensions? My question is, what is the, I mean, how this radial force uh, provided to this ball that moves in a circle, around circle, how this radial force is provided to this ball by these tensions? Well, if you look at carefully, uh, the radial force on this side view is nothing but the force which is in this direction, right? The force, the radial force is going to be in this direction because the ball rotates around this axis, this vertical axis. So there certainly be a, a force, radial force, which is going to be provided to the ball by these tensions, okay? Which one of these tensions have a component on this radial direction? Obviously, the vertical rope, the vertical wire, this vertical T, is having no any component on this direction, right? Only this wire, the hypotenuse wire, will have a component in this direction and that one is going to be the radial force that uh, provides this ball rotating around this center or the axis. So what is this FR in terms of T? So obviously this FR is going to be equal to MV squared over R, right? 
this FR in this picture, top view, the radial force is going to be just uh, the mass of the ball multiplied by the radial acceleration, which is this one. But this FR is going to be provided by this tension in this hypotenuse wire. And this is nothing but the tension multiplied by this angle, right? This angle, cosine of this angle. Cosine of this angle. And cosine of, let's say, theta. But cosine of this angle, this angle and this angle are just equal to each other because they are inverse angles. Let me draw over here. Okay, this angle and this angle are equal to each other. And the cosine of this angle is nothing but 0 0.8 divided by one meters. So the cosine is 0 0.8 divided by one, right? Let me write over here, T times cosine theta is equal to mv squared divided by r, right? And cosine theta is just for this picture, uh, nothing but 0 0.8. T times 0 0.8 is equal to five times the mass of the ball. V is 2.8 squared divided by 0 0.8. So T is just equal to five times 2.8 squared divided by 0 0.8 squared. And this is how you calculate the tension. Okay, I hope this is understood. Sir, I have a question about this question. Yeah. Uh, what if there is no circular motion? What can we say about uh, tension of the wires? Well, if there is no circular motion, then obviously the tension on this wire, that hypotenuse, hyper will just be equal to zero, right? Most probably. Most probably. <laughs> I don't know exactly. Well, okay. So think about this. Okay, this is the ball. It's hanging. There is no motion of it, right? Yes. Uh, on the ball, there is this gravitational weight, right? Which is downward. Yes. And the gravitational weight is going to be opposed by only this vertical string. That's it. Oh, okay. So there will be okay, no. Okay, thanks. There will be no any tension on 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 this, uh, on this string, the second string. This is numbered by second two. This is the first string. Only the first string will have tension, but the second string will not have tension if there is no rotation. Okay, thanks. Good question. Okay, anything else? So I'm just erasing this to solve other problems. So I, ha I have to, you know, solve some problems. Uh, what? I have to solve some problems for uh, the rotational kinematics. But before that, uh, uh, let me open up uh, kinematics of rotary motion and I want to review uh, some of the things in rotational kinematics with you. Let me control my messages in my phone. There were some messages. Sorry about this. Oh. 
Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> this last chapter in your uh, uh, in this semester is about this rotational motion. Rotational motion has two parts. One, the, the kinematics of, we are dealing with the kinematics of rotation. And the other is we are dealing with the uh, dynamics of rotation. Uh, the kinematics only, you know, uh, works around the trajectories. And, you know, the quantities like uh, rotational quantities like rotational speed uh, and angular distance, angular uh, uh, speed, angular, uh, uh, acceleration, etc. Uh, but dynamics deals with also uh, extra to the previous ones as the torque, the concept of torque, which is uh, the capability of force on an object. It is capability of rotating the object. You know, some forces, if you apply uh, on objects, these objects will start also rotating, not only translating the objects, but uh, some forces, if you apply on solid objects, like for example, what you see the wheel over here, the bike wheel, if you apply a force, which is just, you know, uh, tangent to one of, uh, tangent to any point on the rim, if you just, you know, apply a force in this direction, this force will rotate, start rotating the wheel. And we call this effect uh, as the torque, okay? Torque is a new concept, and I will deal with this in, in detail, in detail uh, later. Uh, but for the time being, uh, we have to know some, uh, you know, conventions on this rotation. If you rotate an object, let's say this is the wheel, uh, which is fixed on the center. If you rotate it, right? A point on the wheel, a point on the wheel, uh, the line connecting the, a point on the wheel to the center of the rotation will change its angle, right? So there is certainly be angular displacement of this point, okay? This angle theta, whatever it is, uh, it will change as you rotate this point on the rim of the wheel uh, in any way, okay? If we rotate this wire in the counterclockwise direction, the direction of the rotation is uh, opposite to the direction of clock. Normally, the, you know, all clocks will rotate in this direction, but we take in the rotation, the direction of rotation, which is counterclockwise to be positive, okay? So all angles measured from the horizontal axis, all angles measured from the horizontal axis in the counterclockwise direction to be positive. If we measure uh, the angles in the clockwise direction, these angles are going to be a negative, okay? This is a convention. You know, I'm just saying that, uh, the angle is a kind of angular displacement, uh, just like if you are walking on a line, okay? If you are walking on a line, which is let's say X axis, from this point to this point, what you change is your displacement or your position you are changing. Uh, just like this, if you just change the location of a point on the rim of a rotating wheel from let's say from here to here, the change is in the direction of angle. And this change is going to be labeled as, or is going to be uh, set as angular displacement, delta theta. Whatever the delta X on the line, uh, the angular displacement delta theta on this rotation are just change on the position, right? This is change in the position. This is change in the angular position. This is change in the linear position. In both ways, you're ju just changing the position. But there is somehow 
a difference between the linear displacements and the rotational displacements, okay? You can definitely change your position on the linear axis, linear axis to anywhere to the right or to the left. And there is no limit to this. You can just start from uh, origin and go in the positive X direction indefinitely. You can go, go and go. You will never come to the same point. You will always be going away from your original point. You can go infinitely, infinitely far distances. But can you do this in the rotation? In the rotation, if you start rotating in, in certain direction, let's say a counterclockwise direction, okay, your angular displacement will increase and increase and increase and increase. Maximum, you will rotate 360 degrees, but after this displacement, you will just come back to the same point again. There is no infinite angles. There are no infinite angles in terms of the angular position. If you do this, um, you know, displacement of angle in a certain direction, you will always come back to the same point after a while. Okay, this is a certain difference, a certain difference between the linear dis displacements and the angular displacements. Okay. All right. Uh, there is also, you know, uh, a relation between, you know, angular displacements and the linear displacements or trajectory displacements. If, for example, if you are over here and you just uh, turn an amount of delta theta angle, you just go from this point to this point as a linear trajectory displacement, let's call this S, okay? I mean, just measure the distance, walk, the distance you walk from this point to this point on this circular arc, okay? This is obviously an arc and obviously it has some uh, distance value, right? And we call this distance value as S. Can we find this S in terms of the measure of your uh, walking distance? Can we find this S in terms of delta theta? In terms of, let's say, del not delta theta, but theta. This, this is the angle theta. Well, yes, this S, this length of the arc is nothing but this theta multiplied by the radius of the rotation. Obviously this uh, is a radius because you're walking on a, on a circle and the obvious circle will have some radius. If you multiply this theta by R, you will just find the amount of the distance, uh, uh, you know, and uh, the linear distance that you walk while ch you're changing from position from this point to this point. This is R times theta. But you have to be careful here that in this equation, this angle has to be in units of radian not in units of degrees. Don't use degrees. If you want to calculate the amount of distance in terms of meters while going from this point to this point by changing your angle from zero to theta and this distance S in terms of meters is going to be just this angle theta multiplied by this radius, okay? While doing this, you never use degrees, you have to use radian. For example, if this theta is 30 degrees, sorry, you cannot put 30 in this equation, you have to convert 